to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. First order of business is consent items. Unless there's an objection, is it okay if we move to approve all these objections or these uh, consent items at once? Is there a problem with that? Any objection from any of the board members? Any additions, comments, or critiques, deletions to minutes of the June 18th regular board meeting? Any additions, corrections, subtractions, deletions to the minutes of the July 2nd study session? Any additions, deletions, or corrections to minutes of the July 2nd special board meeting? In that case, is there a motion to approve the consent items one through three? So moved. Motion's made by Jenny. Second. Second by Rick. All in favor of approving consent items, section B, subsections one, two, and three, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Financial report. I want to begin by thanking Julie and Brenda Troyer, and I'm not sure if Todd is here this evening. Todd Vandal, see, is he back there? Thank you, Todd. I, we'll, we'll introduce you a bit later, but I want to thank everybody. I will do my best to try to get everybody through the financial report. I know that um, I'll lean on Julie if needed. But the first would be the approval of claims uh, number 13687 to 13842 totally $984,362.49. We did have two payrolls that you will see um, on this docket. The first was the payroll for June 22nd, um, totaling $330,792.27. Uh, and July 6th with $338,382.32. And then also added late um, were all of the funds reports. The general fund, you will see that we're up a bit with our cash balance ending of $426,807.40. Um, payroll was down just a little bit with it being June. That's when we don't have uh, the pay for the IAs, cafeteria staff, some of those. So you're going to see those increases. Um, and the same will happen again in July as we are still not in session, so you will see that increase again. But then August is a three-month pay, so you will see that number come down again. Todd and uh, Julie will be well on that, and Denise has been um, helping with that, so we'll be able to walk you through that when that time comes. Can everybody see this? Or am I in the way I can move if you want to be able to see it? Okay. Uh, debt service fund right now is at $2,252,278.70. Um, and you can see some of the revenue that was noted in there for June with the commercial vehicle tax and um, the financial institution tax coming in. Capital projects, we got some of our funds in. So we're at $1,145,901.89. Um, keeping in mind that expenditures would include some of the technology salaries and benefits. We're getting ready to renew some of those software licensing to uh, re-up for programs for this fall and the start of school. We did just get uh, some of those property taxes in, which is why you're seeing that increase again at this point in time. Again, those happen twice a year. The transportation fund, we're at $1,129,461.60. And again, that includes salaries and benefits. And again, you're seeing some of that increase in regards to the fact that we're not running a full fleet at that po at this point. And again, you will see another increase in July for the exact same reason as we don't have a full fleet or full staff running. And then at best replacement, we're at $271,636.71. Keeping in mind that we're working on those two buses that were ordered and will be in late this fall. And if you have questions, this former English teacher will do the best she can to try to answer them. Jan, I had a question on, on the payroll. Are we, because with Jen Shank taking on this director of special education, were we, were we closing out her previous contract? You closed or? out one contract, new contract, that's okay. July 1st. Just, I didn't, that was, that's not her new weekly pay. Right, right, right. 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 
Any other questions for Mrs. Vance about the financial report? Is there any <coughs> objection to uh, uh, combining financial report section C, subsection one, two, and three as one vote? In that case, is there a motion to approve financial report section C, subsection one, two, and three as given? Second. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Tom. All in favor of approving the financial report, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 0. <coughs> Student and stakeholder polar focus, subsection D, overnight field trip, cross country camping trip. Adam, do you mind sharing this? This is an annual trip. The cross country team has taken since I've been at Rochester High School to Pokagon State Park, <coughs> uh, where they do cross-country workouts and then camp for an evening and then do another day of cross-country workouts, do some team bonding kind of activities as well. Any questions or comments for Mr. Strasser? Sounds like fun, dancing camp. Uh, except, for, <laughs> except for the whole running thing, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Knock off the running. <laughs> Bless their hearts, because I'd be driving. Any questions for Mr. Strasser? In that case, is there a motion to approve the, Mrs. Vance, do you have any further? No, thank you. In that case, is there a motion to approve the overnight field trip for cross-country camping? So moved. Motion made by Stacy. Second that. Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the overnight camping trip, please signify by raising your hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Information analysis. Second reading of policies about mileage, no cut policy for middle school. Yes. So our policies are based on three readings and then they are adopted. <coughs> if you have any comments about the policy today, you can, you can share that too. But uh, we have two that we are looking at. One is mileage rate and the mileage rate, what we are proposing is tying that to the IRS rate and that it would um, be effective July 1st of each year. That's when our administration contracts roll over, so that's why we would tie it to that. Um, and. Obviously, it's past July 1st at this point, so if we choose to adopt this later, we will retroactive that to July 1st of this year. So anybody getting mileage from us starting July 1st, it'll be about double what it's been. We did an analysis, um, not me, Mrs. Galipsi, uh, Mrs. Vance, Mrs. Calvert did um, an analysis to see the impact to the general budget, and while it would double what we pay for mileage, it would put us on par with what the IRS does, and um, we could absorb that. It would be about a $10,000 cost to us each year. Also, no cut policy for middle school. This policy reads that all middle school sports are open to all eligible athletes. So to be eligible, that person would need to have the grades that would meet the um, standards that we have set and also would need to have um, an attitude that is positive for the coaches. So um, in other words, we could cut still based on attitude or grades or things like that, but not just cut because um, of ability at this point. Something very important that the board wanted to make sure was obvious and that we will, if this policy should be adopted, make clear throughout is that equal access does not mean equal playing time. So if a student um, is picking up you know, volleyball for the first time in eighth grade, they probably aren't going to be playing that many minutes, but they're welcome to work out with the team. If this becomes a hardship for, um, we don't have enough coaches and we don't have enough uniforms, we have uh, ways to help uh, bolster that up. So that is our second reading for that. I assume, and I'm not gonna make that mistake, so are there any public comment on either the mileage or the no cut policy for middle school? Second reading, which is just for the second reading, we don't have to do any motions to approve that. Don't have to, unless there's a motion to move to third reading, and <coughs> that requires you know, unanimous consent of the board members. Uh, then you could go ahead and adopt the policy. I will take any motions if you want to move to the third reading of the no cut policy, mileage policy. Otherwise, we'll wait another month and so go ahead. Right. But you make the motion. I just, I'm going to put words in your mouth. Well, I make a motion that we move on to the third reading. Okay, is there Mr. a second? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I have a question. Yes, Mr. Bailey. Uh, in your discussion of uh, the no cut policy, have you also been having discussion about bringing back B teams or B team coaches? Because that was something that was gotten away with 
several years ago, and I wanted, I just want to know if that was part of your discussion also. It was, Mr. Bailey, and I'll leave it to Mrs. Vance. I wish Mr. Uh, or Greg was here. I know that a lot of teams don't have, or I've heard that, I should say, I've heard that they don't have B and C teams anymore due to cost. I'm not sure where it falls in that, but I know Greg and Mrs. Vance and middle school uh, administrators have talked about that. What is your thoughts on that? Well, I know um, we had some pretty big numbers from middle school basketball, and um, most of the places we went to didn't have a B team, so they, they ended up letting some of their A team play against some of our B team guys, just so they be able to, basically, we played no B team games. We played um, probably four or five extra quarters, and usually that is like a six minute running clock, just so some of those other kids could get time. So I didn't know if you were including in your discussion, um, discussion with area schools, because from a from a player standpoint, it's it's frustrating if they are on the team and they practice every day, and then there's no game situation for them to get to play in. Uh, that that should be part of your discussion too. Um, if we're going that route, we should really reach out to other schools and uh, at least the ones that we play and try to start a conversation about not just us. Because that's that's going to create an issue for if it's just us. We have reached out, and that information was shared. We would be one of uh, one of two schools that have a no cut policy, and I know that Greg was working with the others to see what could be set up as far as games. They think that that's a concern that was expressed, and then there was an interest to make sure that we continue to try to build the skill set and hopefully build the program as a whole. And so that there's still that fine balancing act that's going on. Too, but we we do know we're going to have to set aside the funds to add coaching staff as well to help that out <coughs> and should that happen that there are so many that come out that it would be better to have an a team and then have an intramural situation maybe even in a different season that that would fulfill the the um, qualifications of an no cut policy that anyone who wanted to come out and practice and try could do that the last few years, in some of the grades, there's only <coughs> a couple of kids cut at each level. I mean, there might be, there might have been some with a bubble with larger. So that, that was um, part of our discussion for sure. I think part of our discussion too was the fact that the, the player would uh, know that they could possibly not play at all, but this would be a learning experience to improve themselves. So if they go in there with that understanding, you know, that this I'm going to improve myself that maybe next year I'll play but don't expect to necessarily get to play this year so I guess they know that going up front mm -hmm. where they want to choose to do that or not and there may be no students that choose that I mean they right. may feel like if there's no guarantee of any play then I don't want to go through that that that's totally fine but if they want the opportunity then we felt like at the middle school level that there should still be that opportunity Any other questions or thoughts? Yes, ma'am. Um, was part of the discussion also? Um, Andrea, I, I know you. Oh, I'm Andrea sorry, Hauschel. Andrea Hauschel. You just identify yourself with the rest of the board. Sorry, Andrea Hauschel. Um, was part of the discussion also what administration will have to deal with? Because I understand you're, you're going to say they may not play. But we all know you can say that all day long, and there are still going to be parents that are going to come in and they're going to complain. Mm -hmm. And then administrators are going to spend a lot of time dealing with that. Just curious if that was a discussion as well. That was part of what the administrative team talked about, and I think it comes down to communication at the beginning of each season and what those expectations are. And I know that coaches do a great job of having a parent meeting, and as we set those um, goals and standards, probably administration is going to have to be available at some of those opening meetings to set that and define that for parents. But I don't disagree with you. I think we're going to anticipate those phone calls. And I'm sorry to be fair. That was Dan Bailey, Mr. Bailey, I addressed as well, just to keep it reasonably equal there. Any other comments or questions about that? A motion has been made by Sandy to move to the third reading. Is there a second to that motion? Yes. Second made by Rick. All in favor of approving the no cut policy, please second or please signify by raising your right hand. 
Opposed? Motion carries six to one. Oh, I'm sorry. That was just the no cut policy. Yep. Perhaps I should back up because. No, just go ahead. Um, I just intended that for the no cut policy as far as my vote. Is it okay with the board that we go ahead with the mileage because I am in favor of the mileage? <laughs> That's part of Sandy's motion, so you okay. should Sandy vote on has it. to. Uh, okay. Yeah, <clears throat> that was part of your motion, just to. Yeah. All, the, all was just part of your motion? For both of them. Do I want to That's up to you. No, you, you I will amend my motion. <laughs> I will make a motion that we have third reading of the um, mileage policy. Okay. All in, there's a, she has made a motion now for the third reading of the mileage policy. Is there a second on that I'll motion? Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the mileage policy as read, please signify by raising your right hand. That motion carried 7-0. Did I follow Robert's rules of order okay on that? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try to do it right. Approval of changes to the transportation handbooks. We have two handbooks. One is the regular bus driver handbook, and I'll just quickly go through. First of all, um, throughout the handbook, and you should have a copy of it online, each time the word head driver was used, we have changed that to director of transportation to better reflect that new position and, and Don King's role in that. On page four, I'll quick, quickly walk you through the changes. On page four, um, on bulleted item number three, we added the words who will um, in regards to the uh, transportation office arranging for those repairs. It was kind of a typo that was left out before. <coughs> on page five, under uh, certificates, licenses, and registrations, we uh, not only do they need to have a valid state commercial driver's license, they also need to have the school bus endorsement, and that was not listed before, so we needed to make sure that we included that. On page six, uh, new information or regulations in regards to uh, vision, and we had to add the 2040 in each eye with the field of vision to make sure that we are in compliance there. On page uh, 23, um, information that's coming out of the safety committee and i don't know if um, skeeter would like to talk about this uh, in regards to driver and distress it's a new area of focus that we've been working on with alice training and also with the communication back to central office and how they can contact us the verbiage they need to use and how that will start a process back at central office um, and we'll be talking to them about that during their organization meeting that we have one evening with them on page 35 and on 37 and 38, this is all talking about those field trips and extracurricular activities. We're asking that drivers arrive 10 to 15 minutes early so we don't get those um, panic phone calls from coaches and chaperones that the bus isn't there yet. I think we've gotten into a bad habit of buses arriving just at the time that the field trip or uh, ECA is supposed to depart and we really need the bus there a bit early so that we can load and go through all of those protocols and safety checks. So we're asking that they be there 10 to 15 minutes early. In the same respect, we're gonna ask um, chaperones and coaches to start better communicating uh, contact numbers to the bus drivers. Sometimes an event is canceled or the driver has left and we need them back for whatever reason. So we're gonna ask that those chaperones and, chaperones and supervisors provide their numbers and that's outlined uh, and that the driver should be asking for that contact information. <coughs> Those are all of the changes in the regular bus driver handbook and the special needs handbook. The only things that have been changed is again, the title change from head driver to director of transportation to better align uh, job descriptions and duties with the handbooks. Questions or comments from Mrs. Vance? Your motion to approve the changes to the transportation handbooks. <clears throat> so moved. Motion made by Tom. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the changes to the transportation handbook, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries seven to zero. Approval of Columbia Preschool Handbook. I'm going to turn this over to Jason, but I want to thank him and his teachers for the support of the new preschool class that's coming in. I think that it's going to serve a community need as well as give some good foundational educational supports to our students that I think the whole district will gain from. 
this is our first attempt at this handbook, so I'm sure that there are going to be some changes and adaptations as we move along and learn and grow, but this is our first attempt. It's, it's only 77 pages long. <laughs> I'm going to read it to you guys. Uh, no, uh, I, this was sent to everybody uh, in advance. Uh, I'm not going to go through and read each of these. I, I will start by just telling you that each one of our areas in this handbook uh, doesn't stray from any of our current policy. It is simply just a, uh, an opportunity for us to share with uh, parents information specific to our preschool classes. We've included the new preschool class along with our special needs preschool class into one handbook. And uh, when, we, when we developed this, we, uh, we did it in conjunction with two other schools that had preschools that have been going uh, for several years uh, to kind of get their lessons learned. Um, but it, it simply just covers uh, the, the lunch procedures, drop-off procedures, uh, bringing in snacks, the supply lists. Uh, you're welcome to go through it, uh, but I, I am not going to read it, and, and it is only 10 pages long. But um, the, um, there's, if you have any questions on any of it, again, there's nothing straying from any of our current policies. Uh, the intent would also be that any of the students, being that they're uh, in preschool, they would also fall under the uh, other policies of Columbia's uh, handbook, the, the general handbook that we have um, in terms of uh, discipline uh, things and stuff like that, but we didn't need to outline all that again. So unless you have any questions, um, we've got 20 kids enrolled. Um, we're ready to get this handbook pushed out as soon as you guys approve it. We will be providing breakfast and lunch for those students, transportation. Um, if they're interested in before and after school care, uh, they, can, they can get that as well. And uh, we feel like the, the price is uh, pretty reasonable in terms of the cost. And again, this bringing the preschool, I'll just mention this, and to our school is uh, based on just a, a community need. It is not a, a way or an intent to uh, compete with any of the current preschools. Current preschools do a fabulous job. Uh, we would just like to provide an additional opportunity to uh, ensure kindergarten readiness coming into kindergarten and, uh, and not, <coughs> not at the expense of any of the uh, current schools. So. The only question I have is, a, um, it's very nicely done, um, but the payments and rates, you have payments, but there's no rates on it. So, I mean. Those, those were, must have I know you were still working on it, I just. The, the, the rates are $150 a month uh, with a uh, reduced rate for months that we only have two weeks in October. Or, you know, we'll, we'll prorate that based on mm -hmm. like, right. December is, is not going to be a four hundred and fifty dollars or hundred fifty dollars. And I think it's important important at this point to thank Brian Johnson um, and the foundation who are uh, really um, stepping up and helping us with scholarship money to help fund this for different families and students who need that. So a sincere thank you to him if you see him. He's been an integral role of helping us get this going. There was one addition that I added to the snack portion, um, and it, it basically just. Um, shortly just briefly explains uh, the corporation policy on bringing food into the to the schools that was not on there um, so after the 100% uh, juice drink on your child's snack day um, we, we did, I just added a, a short uh, statement about our current policy of not bringing in homemade foods unopened or you know open foods uh, things like that just to, to help with that and then we're also working on the snack piece because <coughs> The, uh, the state may provide snacks for us, and if that's the case, then we won't have that parents um, bring us in. So that's, that could change. And this will kind of be a working um, handbook throughout the year in terms of, uh, we'll keep a copy of it right by my, my phone and as, as we need to make changes or additions or anything like that, we'll, we'll jot them down so we can make improvements. Any further questions, Mr. Sarkin? Um, what if you don't want or need your child to go all day? Because this is an all day program. Correct. Right? What happens if you don't want that full day? Is that possible? No, we, I mean, they would probably not apply for the, I mean, apply for a position. I mean, there's, there's part day programs in the, in the community, okay. um, but this is a full day program. The curriculum is built around the full day program. <coughs> Our intent would be that 
you know, the only one that applies and is accepted in the position for, for full day purposes. Okay. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Snyder? Mm -hmm. In that case, is there a motion to approve the Columbia Preschool Handbook? Motion. Motion Second. made by Rick. Second. Second by Sandy. <laughs> All in favor of approving the Columbia Preschool Handbook, please signify by raising your right hand. <coughs> motion carries 7 to 0. Approval of sale destruction of surplus items. We continue to whittle away at this and clean our tunnels and hallways and extra. Um, uh, build some extra space and rooms uh, with the hope that at some point we'll be able to order in bulk some of those supplies and have better organized storage to know what we have across the district. This was submitted by Scott Kistler in regards to the, some um, items that are no longer in use. And Scott, if you could share if they're worth sending to robotics, if I know he is interested in trying to auction the monitors that others may have a use for, but I don't know if any of these others are not working or just um, most of these are old equipment that we've had for seven to eight years um, that uh, normally we go through and clean out um, closets, broken computers, uh, a lot of this stuff is, has been broken. Um, some of these, like the TVs, are um, TVs that have been in the schools that we just took down recently at Riddle. Um, they're the big, uh, big TVs, not, no flat panels or anything like that. Um, but most of the stuff that we do donate to robotics to help fund their programs that, that Joel does. Um, the only thing that probably would still have value are the monitors or like 19 inch flat, uh, flat panel monitors that uh, we would no longer need for the, um, uh, because we use them with the desktops and would no longer need them. Did the mice come from the tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> we have run into plenty of those. <laughs> Any questions of Mr. Kissler about these surplus items or comments? So Scott, your plan is to donate to uh, the robotics club what can be. We yeah. would sell the monitors and the rest would go to recycling. Right. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve the surplus items list? So Let's, I'll go with Stacy first with seven. the motion and Tom with the second. All in favor of approving the surplus item list, please, list, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries 7 to 0. Okay, personnel. Uh, as far as the personnel report, I, unless there's an objection from any of the board, I'm going to set the Mr. Haas issue to the end so we can allow public comment. Is there any objection to that? In that case, there's no objection. We're going on to the other hiring decisions, and then we'll come back to that. First, our report for today, hiring Todd Vanderweel as the business manager. Andrew Kendig is the night custodian at RMS. 2018-19 coaching staff. There's an attached sheet. Do I need to go through all those, Ted, or is it sufficient for them to be up on the board? It's traditional to go through all of them. All right. Uh, I will go through those. I'll come back to that. Retirement, Don Meyer is a bus driver. Resignation, Taylor Shally is a building technology coordinator. Added today at 1030, Rasma Melton for the Columbia Instructional Assistant for Special Needs Preschool class. Beth Knifel for Columbia Instructional Assistant for Life Skills class with Chrissy Merrill. Cassandra King is the Columbia Instructional Assistant for Special Needs. And added today at 3 o'clock, Jennifer Bauman, Columbia Special Education teacher. Let's come back to the coaching staff and I'll stand up so everybody can see and read them from the board. Can you pull those up for me, please, Mr. Kissler? Yes, I can have it. Right here. Thank you. For football, Brian, Lever Brian Hooker is the head coach. Sean Kelly is the assistant coach. Derek Beck is the assistant coach. Ken Hughes is an assistant coach. John Mitchell is an assistant coach. Kyle Seacrest is an assistant coach. Kevin Seacrest is an assistant coach. Rob Schaefer is an assistant coach. And Ben Dalton is a volunteer. For volleyball, Aaron Leap is a head coach. Sarah Dalton is an assistant coach. Renee Durkis is a JV coach. Chad Leap is a volunteer. Jessica Dalton is a volunteer. Caitlin Sawyer is a volunteer. And Riley Piper is a volunteer. For cross country, Scott Stahlbaum is the head coach. For boys tennis, Jesse Atkinson is the head coach. Tammy Hooker is a volunteer. For boys soccer, Trevor Brown is the head coach. Felix Amandi is the assistant coach. 
Denville Mason is an assistant coach, and Matt Gonwar is a volunteer. For girls soccer, Chantel Rensberger for head coach, Mark Eber is the assistant coach, and Mario Ponce, is that how you pronounce that, Mr. Ponce? As the volunteer. For girls golf, Chad Thomas is the head coach, Lyle Lingenfelder is a volunteer. Winner for wrestling, Clint Gard is the head coach, Derek Holloway is an assistant coach, Zeke, Zach Weiss, Zeke Weiss is a JV coach, Bryce Roberts is a JV coach, Danny Beck is a volunteer coach, and Tristan Wilson is a volunteer coach. For swimming, Stephanie Brown is a head coach, Kevin Reedy is an assistant coach, Katie Sanchez is an assistant coach, Lisa Andrews as an assistant coach, Scott Stahlbaum is a volunteer, Jared Feldman is a volunteer, and Emma Feldman is a volunteer. For girls basketball, Brian Jennings is the head coach. Uh, there is a blank under assistant coach varsity. Jake Ruff is a JV coach and Jenna Ruff as a volunteer assistant. For boys basketball, Rob Malco is the head coach for the varsity. Tony Stasiak is an assistant coach for the varsity. Sean Kelly is an assistant coach for the varsity. Joe McCarter is a freshman coach. Wade Langley is an assistant freshman coach. Austin Onnefeld, Luke Smith, Doug Malco, Abby Malco, and Mike Malco as volunteer assistant coaches. Spring track, Ryan Hell is the head coach, Scott Stahlbaum is the assistant coach, Ken Hughes is the assistant coach, John Walkman is an assistant coach, John Nile is a volunteer, Alicia Walkman is a volunteer, and Carmen Reeves is a volunteer. For baseball, Corey Good is a head coach, Tony Stasiak is a JV coach, Dave Value is a volunteer, Connor Thompson is a volunteer. For softball, Carla Holland is a head coach. Allison Butler is a JV coach. Andy Co Holland is a volunteer. Dave Musselman is a volunteer. Todd Beeler is a volunteer. Alexa Holland is a volunteer. And Riley Holland is a volunteer. For boys golf, Lyle Lingenfelder is the head coach. And Dan Bailey is a head coach. There will be co-head coaches for boys golf. For girls tennis, Jenny, Jesse Atkinson is a head coach. And Tammy Hooker is the volunteer. And for cheer, Bryn Dirks and Karina Limbach. If you make me go through those again, I may just have you read them on your books. Are there any questions, comments, critiques for Mrs. Vance on any of those? Thank you. Do we need to do the middle school coaches too? I'm sorry? Do we need to do the middle school coaches too? Are they, are they on there? They didn't scroll down far enough? Should be a second time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> RMS, Rochester Middle School Coaches Director. You're right, Jenny, I was wrong. Fall for football, Ryan Hell is the head coach. Bryce Roberts, Nathan Kramer, and John Walkman as assistant coaches. Bill Allen and Alex Borg as volunteers. For volleyball, Anaya Strasser is the sixth grade coach. Kaylin Renstead is an eighth grade coach. And Darla Beck, Olivia Harris as volunteers. Cross country, Alex Gudeman is the head coach. Selena Lehman as the assistant coach. Boys basketball, Dan Bailey for eighth grade. Mason Heidi for 7th grade, TJ Smith for 6A, Dan Bailey for 6B, Abby Malco for K through 2, Seth Wilson and Phil Bowers as volunteers. Girls basketball, Don King for 8th grade, Lori Atkinson for 6A, Leah Hinderleiter for 6B, and Sally Dunwoody and Lindy Lunau as volunteers. Wrestling for RMS, Clint Gart as the coordinator, Zeke Weiss as the head coach, Bryce Roberts as the assistant, and it has Derek Hawley and Tristan Wilson. I don't know if those are assistants or volunteers. Uh, elementary wrestling. Dave McBeck is the white head coach. Gar Simpson is the white assistant coach. Justin Miller is the white assistant coach. Jacob Schroeder is the black head coach. Uh, Bryce Roberts is the black assistant coach. Clint Gard is the gold head coach. Derek Hawley is the gold assistant coach. And Dave McBeck is the gold assistant coach. Travis Horn is a gold volunteer coach. And Derek Beck is a gold assistant coach. And Tristan Wilson, I, there is no designation, but I assume a volunteer coach. Track, Alex Gudeman is the head coach. Nate Basham is the assistant coach. Tristan Wilson is the assistant coach. Bryce Roberts is the assistant co coach. And Misty Cripe is the assistant coach. Middle school golf, Chad Thomas is the head coach. Middle school cheer, Heidi Miller and Michelle Walters. Make sure I get all the pages. That should be everything. Any comments, questions for Mrs. Vance? Thank you. In that case, there a motion, is there a motion to approve the personnel report as given? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the personnel report, signify by raising your right hand. Seven to zero. 
If we may, could, can I have Todd Vanderwill stand up in the back? And Todd, if you could introduce yourself as our new manager, business manager, and tell us just a little bit about you, and then next month we'll bring you up here to the hot seat. Um, <laughs> and now I was going to give a speech. We'll turn it over to you. Um, yeah. I'm the business manager. I'm Todd Vanderwill. So I guess a um, She came here from, uh, from Argus and um, had a few years of business experience, and I Excited to be here and hope the Corporation grow and improve and be the best it can be. That's been learning a lot about all of the five different funds, knowing that on December 31st and January 1st, we'll be talking a whole new system, so we're going to train them just in time to retrain them. So, but he's been a great addition to our office staff. So, thank you, Todd, for being here this evening. Welcome aboard. As to the Oscar Haas disciplinary matter, we will hear from Mrs. Vance for a recommendation. Um, I, I would openly share in, in what I have to share. I know that Oscar has heard and we've had uh, multiple discussions in my office since uh, the infraction occurred. Um, had the board forced me or the community forced me to make a decision that evening, it would not be the decision that I am proposing to the board um, this evening. I had the opportunity to meet with some community leaders through the course of this time and heard from some community leaders and what I heard uh, reiterated uh, several times was the need for accountability, um, looking at grace and stories of grace and how that can and play into this as well as the power of forgiveness. I also heard from several teachers and, and parents and community leaders, many of them represented here this evening. That taken into account, I started to weigh pros and cons, um, continued to have conversations with Oscar, and um, have brought two changes to the board in regards to his contract, both of which he is aware of. Uh, I think that the board actually maybe has three items that they need to consider for this evening. The first is that Oscar has been on a paid leave of absence for um, investigatory purposes, which the board would need to take action on, is my understanding. I would also propose the following changes to Oscar's contract, and there are two uh, major ones for the board to consider. One is uh, next month I will be bringing all of the administrative contracts to the board for approval. All of those except for Oscar's would include um, the two year rollover period. I would propose to the board that Oscar's contract be a contract for the 2018-2019 principal's contract allowing him time to uh, prove to the community exactly what the community has been sharing with us. And he knows that it's a time of rebuilding of that trust. Um, also, the board would need to prove, uh, consider my proposal that he be placed on a 10-day unpaid administrative leave. We've talked about that as well and uh, the reasoning for that. He would also be put on a growth plan and we have talked about those specifics um, of areas of concern that are more personal in nature and he and I would work on collectively. Some of the things that I heard not only for community leaders in regards to um, accountability as well as grace and forgiveness and I try to uh, wrap all of that up into this um, proposal to the board. You know we talked a lot about um, the faculty and staff and then how they've rallied together to become part of um, a national schools to watch something that isn't seen uh, very often, especially in small rural schools on limited budgets. Uh, he brought a Champions Together program. I was sitting down in Indianapolis and heard that and shot a text to the administrative team. Oscar was one of the first to uh, jump on that. And before I even got back, there were plans and arrangements that had been made to grow that program. Um, I have data coming from that building that shows that he is making academic gains and leading the teachers in that direction. And that's huge for the success of our students. Um, but Oscar, I will remind you that this falls back on you and that this path of self-destruction we need to work together on to stop. And I think that we have a workable plan in place should the board um, accept that recommendation. I also know and acknowledge um, the checks and balances that go into this and, and the need for the board to be that sounding board as well, and I respect that. Uh, and those would be the proposed changes that I would bring to you, knowing that you also have a voice in this as well, and that needs to be respected and heard. Mr. Oz, do you have anything to say? 
Um, no words are going to fix what occurred on June 28th. Um, I do apologize. Rochester Middle School has 60 plus adults and 420 kids that do amazing things and we should not be in the news for a major mistake that I made that day. So I want to apologize to the community. I appreciate the community's support. I appreciate Mrs. Vance's willingness to work with me and I appreciate and respect any decision that the seven board members make here today. So I appreciate your time this evening and thank you again Mrs. Vance. And real quick, Bonnie, Candy, and Cassie have kept the building going tremendously, so I truly appreciate my team doing what um, we've set out to do. Thank you. Public comments are going to be taken. If you would please stand over here just to the right of Mr. Steiner so the camera can get your its view. Uh, address the board. One comment per person, please, around three minutes. Uh, please identify yourself so we know who you are. If you're from another school, please identify which school you're with. Uh, no interruptions, and of course, as always, we expect a civil discourse, whether you're pro or against the decision. So, is there anyone who wants to speak about the Mr. Haas matter? Mrs. Cripe, would you please identify yourself, what school you're from, and say I'm Misty Cripe. I'm from Rochester Middle School. Um, from the day I walked into the middle school, Mr. Hawes has set the tone of you are not defined by your mistakes. You're defined by your comeback. He will come back from this, and we will gain from that. If you fire him, some other school will hire him, and their comeback will be big. We don't want that. We want it here. This community, um, we want to be the community. We want to be the school corporation where we lift each other up in times of need not knock each other down. He does that every day at school. When a kid makes a mistake, he says, you apologize, you tell me your game plan of how you're gonna come back from this. He made a mistake. Now's his time to really relate with those kids and show them how they can come back because he's not gonna hide this. He's not gonna gloss it over. He's gonna show the kids that you can make a mistake and still come back from this and be successful. And we need to help him do that. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Please, sir. My name is Heath Hardy. I'm a parent. Sorry, I didn't get Heath up. Hardy? Heath Hardy? Yeah. Thank I'm a parent you, of one of the kids that um, he has been principal over in the uh, middle school. My kid's a difficult kid every now and then, but he changes him. He talks to him. He brings him back to me, and I see the change. I think he's an asset. Should keep him. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Watson. My name is Kathy Watson, and I'm just speaking as the daughter of his daughter's best friend. And I publicly want to thank him for taking her and pushing her out of her comfort zone and coaching her in the in the positions that he's coached her. Um, she's taken his coaching style and thrived. Um, Last summer, my husband was in a pretty serious car accident. Callie had a softball game that night. I texted Oscar, he was in Washington with schools to watch. Before I was in the ambulance, Carrie Weaver was texting me and saying, Oscars, let me know what's happened. This is the plan for your children. I didn't have to worry about my kids. They were well taken care of. I, didn't, I had forgotten that Oscar was in Washington, but he took care of my kids. So I didn't have to worry about them and I could focus on John. Um, Oscar and Christina, thank you from the bottom of my heart for everything that you do for my children. We love you. And I, I echo what Misty says. He is going to take this mistake and thrive. He's going to get, he's going to be a, come back as a better person, a better principal. And I just encourage you to take everything into consideration. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm uh, Marnie Minier, and I'm an eighth grade teacher at the middle school, and I'm pretty new to the area. I've just been here a year, so I wanted to kind of share my um, thoughts, and I have a handful of letters here, but I won't read all of them, but we have some um, letters from Lori Shane, Stephanie Brown, Dan Bailey, 
and um, Bryce Roberts just kind of in support of him. But what I wanted to say just was... Minute, I'm sorry, I'm writing those down. Could you read those again? Got it. Um, yeah, I'm fast. Lori, <coughs> it's okay, I am too, so I understand. Lori Shane. Lori Shane. For clarification, are these all... Positive, are there any negative? In support of. They're yes. all in support of. Okay, Thank, I'm sorry. Just no, don't be sorry. I didn't know if I should read them or we had one... I just want person. all sides to be heard. Lori yeah. Shane. Stephanie Brown. Stephanie Brown. Bryce Roberts. Bryce Roberts. And Mr. Dan Bailey. Mr. Dan. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, yes. And then I have um, the letter that I wrote, and thank you for allowing us the opportunity to send the letters and certainly for hearing us today. I wanted to just kind of reiterate the day before, um, you know, there was any type of school situation, whether it was a school safety meeting or whether it was an incident with a student. I work with kids that have a lot of different behavior disorders and things like that. And I remember feeling, one, that it was probably the safest place for those kids. And then also, I watched the integrity that he gives those students who don't have that when they go home. And in one instance, um, a, you know, a little guy on my caseload, he made a pretty tough choice and a bad decision. And just the way he allowed him to bounce back from that and what came from it. I just think that his story will be one to tell, and he's a remarkable supervisor and just the person that the students flock to in the morning when they come into school um, with stories of the night before. He always knows so much about the families. I'm just astonished by all that he can bring to our eighth grade team meetings, and I've just been very impressed with his leadership. Thank you, Ms. Would anyone else like to speak? Mr. Kramer? My name is Nathan Kramer, and I work at the middle school. Um, I appreciate you letting us say and send letters and even be able to talk um, on behalf of Oscar and what he has meant to us personally, but also as a school. And I want to read just a part of what I had written to you. Um, while I understand disciplinary action needs to be taken for Oscar, I also wanted to communicate the opportunity we have as a community to rally around Oscar in this time. We all make mistakes and have our own personal battles to work through, but this man has given his heart and soul to our community. I believe that. He is not from here, but has made Rochester home for himself and his family. It would be my hope that in light of this mistake, we could support him as a family would to pick him up in this time. This is an opportunity to give Oscar a chance to, make, to connect on a deeper level with our students in light of a very human mistake. I am hopeful that Oscar will be allowed to continue as a great leader he has proven himself to be. And I know that as I've spoken with other staff members, as I've communicated with them, it's been an overwhelming, we can't imagine the school without Oscar there. We really want to continue with him as our leader and to continue where we go as a school. So hopefully we get an opportunity to do that and just wanted to express support for Oscar. Would anyone else like to speak? Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Mr. Watson? Sorry, I'm kind of emotional. I said that. If you would please state your name. <clears throat> I'm John Watson. Uh, it's my wife Kathy, and she was staying by my accident. It was a pretty bad accident, so she's a, <clears throat> that kind of got me. Um, but Oscar, you know, he stepped up when I needed him. Uh, if I was to have <clears throat> needed somebody, if I was gone, it'd be this man right here. Because I know we take care of both of my girls. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Watson. Would anyone else like to speak? Mr. Bernacki? Luke Bernacki, Riddle Principal. Uh, it's going on my third year here at Rochester. And just to speak for Oscar, his guidance to me as an incoming administrator has been a tremendous help. Uh, can always go to him in the middle school, observe all the great things that are happening there to help continue that bridge that we've talked about building from Columbia to middle to middle and up to the high school. 
and uh, with Oscar's help and guidance, I'm building that bridge there. And, and they're doing some wonderful things, and he's been a tremendous support <coughs> for me uh, being a new principal at Riddle. So just wanted to offer that up. Thank you, Mr. Productive. Anyone else like to speak? Mrs. Wilson? Stacy Wilson. Um, all of you received our emails. Gosh, I always cry. Um, and for the record, for Mrs. Wilson, you all did receive her email, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And um, a lot of the supporters from the softball um, team. And just want to say that, like everyone else has, we all make mistakes. We're not defined by him. And um, we totally support him, not only as a coach, as a person. My son is at the middle school. And um, I know that him and Mrs. Murphy are a great team. They have some stability there at the school now. And I feel like, um, like the others have said, by uh, not keeping him that someone else is going to get him and, and he's going to come back you know bigger and better than that <clears throat> given the opportunity to uh, make the wrong right thank you mrs wilson would anyone else like to speak would anybody like to talk pro or con about mr hobbs Please, I see a hand back there, but I can't see a face. Hi. Hi. Kate Wagner. Kate Wagner? Um, yes. Thank you, ma'am. I'd like to speak about accountability and other instances that have happened with this school district. I'm not from here. Uh, I'm from Pittsburgh, and I think that this is starting to become a problem where we're kind of becoming thick as thieves. I'm not sure who else was on the boat that evening. I'm sure that we could pull the records and find out who else was on the boat. Any other parents? Were there any other parents on the boat? Are you asking me? I'm asking anybody. I can tell you this. I was not on the boat, contrary to popular rumor. Nor were any of my children on the boat at the time that happened, contrary okay. to popular rumor. Were there rumor. any other adults? And I was not almost arrested at the time, contrary to popular rumor. I just wanted to reassure you that, because I know there's a lot of those rumors going around. I'm just wondering, who, what, what other adults were on the boat? This is about discussing pros or cons for Mr. Haas. You can dig into that later if you'd like right, to right but now. What, did, what would have happened if one of the kids had gotten injured? Then what? I, I think we're just, oh yeah, he's this, he's that. Well, of course, with softball, because he's <laughs> biased. So what about everything else? If you're going to hand down a ruling on an individual, it needs to be equal across the board. You can't pick and choose. I understand it's a small community, but it's it's getting out of hand. So. Thank you, Mrs. Wagner. <clears throat> Would anybody else like to speak? Murphy? Cassie Murphy, assistant principal. I can speak on everything else for Oscar. I work closer to him than anybody else probably. I would trust him with anything, and I do. And I trust him every day to make the right decisions. I see him work tirelessly with students, parents, teachers, difficult people. He knows he made a mistake. He, among anyone, is happy to take consequence for that. However, I think the punishment should fit the crime. It was summertime, he had a little bit too much fun. I'm not gonna condone it, but I can speak to every single day that he goes into that office and he does his job well. He's taught me everything I know. I feel like we're a great team. I would trust him with my own kids any day of the week. I support him 100% and I want him at the most. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Murphy. 
Anyone else? Would anyone else like to speak? <clears throat> Going once. Going twice. Last chance if you'd like to speak in a pro or con about Mr. Hobbs. Very well. Board members, do you have any uh, questions or comments or anything you'd like to say? In that case, on the discipline issue of a 10-day unpaid leave and contract reduction to one year for 2018 and 19, do I have a motion from a board member to approve Mrs. Vance's recommendation? Mr. Wagner? Uh, Brad, I think you need to include the paid leave. 10 day, or the paid leave of, I don't know how many days it's been. Um, he's been on paid leave since, I apologize, it's on the His paid uh, leave of absence began June 29th after we concluded our meeting at that time. 18 days as of today. So is there a motion on the discipline issues of a 10 day unpaid leave, an 18 day paid leave, and a contract reduction to one year for 2018 and 19? Do I have a motion from a board member to approve Mrs. Vance's recommendation? And put on an improvement plan. And put on an improvement plan. I'll make a motion to approve uh, Mrs. Vance's uh, recommendation for disciplinary action. Motion made by Tom. Is there a second? I'll second. Second made by Jenny. All in favor of approving Mrs. Vance's recommendation with regards to the discipline of Oscar Haas, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries. I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five yeas. Those opposed? Two opposed. Motion carries five to two in the disciplinary action against Mr. Hawes. And now to super, superintendent's business. I want to thank Scott Kistler and his technology crew. They did a wonderful job helping us do um, some marketing and online registration at the fair. And I know that was above and beyond and he's kind of grinning at me. It was a tremendous amount of work and effort and a thank you to the uh, fair committee and Purdue Extension Board for allowing us to be out there. Great turnout, a lot of positive support. So thank you. I know you went above and beyond. I'd like to second that, Mr. Kissler. It's okay with you, Mrs. Oh, Vance, absolutely. because I know with all the steel buildings and I know a lot of parents appreciated that. So thank you very much. She mentioned that in the study session as well, but I wanted to do it publicly with the I'd media. like to thank RTC for their connection. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to do the online registration out there. Um, we will continue. I know parents were panicked if they didn't make it during that registration time. We still want to work with you. We know that there's always glitches and, and we want to make sure that we're helpful and still get your students registered. We'll be getting information out about the start of the school year. Um, and I want to take this opportunity to thank family and friends uh, for their support as well. It's been difficult for all of us. So thank you all for your attention and your support and your open communication and, and continuing to uh, be very open with me in that communication and that support and we'll remind oscar he's been given a chance make sure you run with it thank you any other superintendent's business i don't believe so is there other business for the discussion of the board tonight as we always do we've had public comment about that issue is there any public comment on anything else that you'd like to make you're sort of welcome to mr hayes Please identify yourself, sir. I know we know you, and it's not date night, but it's not. Well, it is. She it back is there. Is she back there? Yeah. So it is Should we split up tonight? <laughs> okay. Tim Hayes. I would just like to publicly thank the board members for your service. Uh, Janet talked about it being a tough month. That's not what you signed up for. But that's what you got dealt. So I appreciate your wisdom. Your caring and concern and your fairness. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Any other public comment? You are certainly welcome to speak. It's a public meeting. I do just need to say one thing. Um, on our personnel report, uh, Jenny Bauman um, 
as was on there for a resignation. I want to just take a moment and thank her for uh, her years of teaching here at Rochester. Um, if you would, Mr. Snyder, stand up and look in the camera so everybody in Rochester can see. Jenny, we thank you for your service and the time that you spent at Rochester when she was at Rochester Middle School. Fabulous special needs teacher. Um, she has not left the, the uh, Rochester Community Schools uh, for another school or anything like that. I'm not going to get into uh, her personal business, but uh, we are very supportive of her. And I just got to thank her for her service and her time uh, uh, here at, uh, at Rochester because uh, she's been fabulous and she'll, uh, she'll do great in, in whatever she decides. So, thanks. Thank you. Any other public comment? Board members, any further business to discuss? We'll consider the meeting adjourned.